Hello everyone and welcome to Foreign Legion Multi Massacre, which is a sequel to a not so popular third person shooter. This is the character customization screen, but I like everything as it is for now. And this is our weapon loadout. We unlock more as we level up, and we level up by killing enemies. This game is primarily meant to be multiplayer, but uh, nobody is going to be playing this online. It is not very popular. So single player is all we've got. The original game was actually single player exclusive, so switching to multiplayer uh, focus is kind of a big change. This is our main weapon, an Uzi. The Uzi can actually shoot all the way across the map, as with all guns. None of the guns have limited range. You can shoot all the way across the map with all of them. Which means you can do things like snipe people from like 300 feet away with a shotgun, like I did just a bit ago. It goes without saying that a shotgun has uh, close range advantages. Also, it has a rather big blast radius, which makes it very easy to blow people's heads off. Which you're going to be seeing a lot of. There are, I think, three types of enemies. There's that fellow with a machine gun, or an assault rifle, I'm not sure which. There are bombers who run at you and try to explode in your face. And there are guys with rocket launchers. I personally find the guys that try to explode in your face to be the most dangerous. Now this game is meant to be co-op, but it's also incredibly easy in single player. Unless you're standing out in the open. Which happens to me. I stand out in the open a lot because I want to get my score up. That being said, you have to die four whole times to lose. Surviving in these open-ended maps, sorry, open-ended maps, is not really a priority. So much as killing as much as possible. There are places to hide, though, when your health does refill rather quickly. If you're in the middle of fire, though, running away is not going to do you any good. Because the enemies can aim just as well as you can. Their bullets reach just as far. They might not be nearly as durable, but when there's a lot of them, you can't exactly just flee. Something of note about this level is that pretty much everyone is on a ground level. Nobody likes to get up high. There are a couple buildings near the edge where some rocket guys hang out, but that's about it. There's another map where the enemies actively try to take sniper positions, but not this one. Everybody just kind of bum rushes you here. In spite of this game's simplicity and its really stupid AI, I find it really fun to play and very satisfying. I think it's because of how easy it is to make people's heads explode. That's probably a big part of it. It has the Dynasty Warriors-esque design philosophy where there's a large number of enemies attacking you all at once, but they're all pretty stupid. So that way you don't get murdered immediately. You're also kind of a bullet sponge. Like I said, if one or two enemies catch you by surprise, you can kind of back away and take cover, but the best defense in this game is a good offense. The idea is basically just to kill everybody before they kill you, even when they're like soaking you with bullets. Gotta stop the bullets at their source. I think people find maps like this to be kind of empty in single player, but I disagree. I think they're pretty fun to traverse regardless. The rocket launcher may seem like a really good weapon, but it's not. You have to aim very precisely with it. Unlike most explosive weapons and other shooters, it does not deal very much splash damage. The weapons you unlock as you level up are kind of just improvements. They're not necessarily meant to be other options, just better. The shotgun is my favorite weapon early on because, like I said, it has a good bullet spread. Makes it really easy to blow people's heads up. Also deals amazing damage to bodies at close range if for some reason you want to aim at their bodies. Which I wouldn't recommend. 
I suppose this game is kind of reminiscent of an incremental game. Kind of like Cookie Clicker. You drop into a stage, you blow things up for five minutes, and you get money, and you buy upgrades to blow more things up. That's basically the whole game. It's still satisfying to see how high your head explosion counter can get before you end a stage. Something good to be said about the rocket launcher, at least, is that it kills things in one hit, as you might expect. So something that happens while you're playing the game on full resolution in windowed mode is that the text gets all messed up. And I decided to leave this in, just to show off that the game is kinda buggy. It's definitely not perfect. This is my personal favorite stage. It's a lot like the city stage, but more close quartered. More closed in. And this is the stage where the enemies actively try to take sniper positions. You can see that the glitch does not just affect the text. I really like this game. I think it's nice. Super glitchy though. Getting headshots in this game is easier than in any other game I've ever played. I definitely think that's intentional though. The body shot counter might not make a lot of sense now, but when we get different weapons it will. The visual style in this game reminds me a bit of Worms. Also the war theme helps with that. One of my favorite things about this stage is that there's many valid places to camp out. There's not just one or two, there's several. And I don't get to show them all off here because I only have five minutes to work with. I try to show off the actual village the best I can, though. You won't be able to see it, but this is also the stage where I learned that each AI spawns with very specific commands, depending on the map. Like, some AIs are programmed to chase you, and some are programmed to go to a specific building. And that's how I know that there's a specific AI in this stage who gets stuck on staircases when they try to go up them. Maybe we'll see him. Probably not. It's kind of funny, because none of the AIs that uh, are programmed to go to specific spots can really get distracted by you. You have to really fill their body full of bullets for them to notice that you're shooting at them. And you might as well have just shot their head at that point, which only takes one shot. There are so many neat places to hide out on this map. Having the high ground in this game is not an advantage, by the way. We can't shoot downward very easily. Too chubby for that. Too chubby and cartoonish. I'm sure this game probably seems ultra boring to a lot of people. But that splatter of blood never gets old for me. And this game does require some grinding if you want to unlock everything. Now in multiplayer the grind might be less noticeable. But to get certain items you have to kill well over a thousand enemies to get the right amount of money. I tend to generally cut the crap and put it on endless mode. For example, I played this stage for 45 minutes in the making of this Let's Play, so I could get enough money to unlock everything. Played it for 45 minutes straight, doing the same thing over and over. It was uh, kind of mind-numbing, to say the least, but I really wanted to show this game off. It's not the greatest game, but I just felt like showing it off. And that would require getting all of the, uh, extra weapons. I try to make use of the rocket launcher, just to show it off, but it's really bad. There's literally no reason to use it over the guns you already have. Especially since you can headshot people from all the way across the map with an Uzi. 
There's a mechanic in this game in which we can radio for reinforcements to drop us extra ammo and health. But our health refills, and we're not going to run out of ammo in the five minutes the game gives us. So unless we're playing on endless mode, it's kind of pointless. Now there is one particular map where you might need to get an ammo drop. Maybe. But that's just because of the sheer density of enemies. A cautionary note about taking cover. It's really hard to tell what you can and cannot take cover behind. So just take cover behind the thickest thing possible. Or else it's not going to work out. I do like games where you can take cover without having an actual cover system. But this game is very arcadey, so you shouldn't be taking cover very often. Alright, so let's navigate through the gibberish, back to the weapons menu. That's not the weapons menu. So I can unlock the new gun, which is a sniper rifle. Now the sniper rifle, just like the bazooka, kills everything in one hit. But it is not terrible. It has a very useful scope function, like you might expect, and it also kills enemies regardless of whether you shoot them in the head or anywhere else. What I'm saying is that the sniper rifle pretty much turns you into a complete death machine. This map may seem kind of empty of enemies, and that's because the AI has a really hard problem moving between floors. This level has two floors. And the AI can't seem to decide which one to stay on, or how to follow you when you leave. This is by far the most boring map in the game, and I only wanted to come here to show you that dolphins jump out of the ocean. Dolphins with dynamite strapped to them. That's the highlight of this level. Right there. Dolphin with dynamite strapped to it. There you go. They serve absolutely no tactical advantage whatsoever. They're just there to be there. I suppose they're supposed to be humorous. But yes, we are not going to play through this whole- also more messed up text back there. We are not going to play through this whole map because it is really boring and there's nothing special to see here. But I do get to use it to show off how completely awesome the sniper rifle is. completely destroying shit. So that was it for the basic maps of Foreign Legion. The other maps are less straightforward and have gimmicks to them. That being said, there are only six maps in the game. Originally there were only three. But yeah, that's it for now and I'll see you for the rest of this really short game.